Hello again. Last time I set up my goals for designing a simple 8-bit CPU using discrete logic chips. I explained that it would have 8 general purpose registers with a 16-bit address bus. I described some of the problems and compromises, which no doubt will lead to mistakes, in what I'm designing. I did say I wanted to run through my instruction set, but I changed my mind and thought I'd jump into some logic design instead. I'll start with a register file. Firstly, what is a register file? It is the part of the CPU that holds the registers, allowing reading and writing of registers, and maybe some other simple operations. It connects to the data bus in order to provide inputs to the ALU and retrieve results, and to load and store from memory. It connects to the address bus in order to provide addresses for load and store. Finally, it is driven by the instruction decode logic directing which operations it will perform. These are some example instructions that will interact with the register file. I'm using this to find the requirements. As I said, I'll go through the full instruction set another time. There are many instructions that need to read a register as data or to write a new value. The load and store memory instructions need to read a register pair as an address. I've also decided to add optional post increment to load and store instructions. These are very useful when copying data in a loop. In this case, I've decided to handle that within the register file itself. Finally, the increment and decrement instructions will be handled within the register file. Let's go through these requirements before making a design. For storage, it has to have 8 registers of 8 bits each, with each pair viewable as a 16-bit address. Additionally, it will store the processor flags. I'm also considering including the program counter, although I will not design this in this episode. The operations a register file must support are reading a single register as data, reading a pair as an address, writing a new value into a register, incrementing or decrementing a register, and incrementing a register pair. A quick note on terminology. I'm using read and write for registers, so as not to confuse these ideas with load and store of memory. The inputs needed to meet these requirements will be a register number 0 to 7 inclusive to select a register for the operation, an 8-bit value for a write operation, flags for output enable for this register to be sent to the data bus, output enable for this register pair to be sent to the address bus, triggering a write, triggering incrementing or decrementing, triggering incrementing of a pair, and finally a clock for any edge triggered operations. Many of these inputs are mutually exclusive and imply that decoding has already been completed by the decoder module in the CPU. The outputs are much simpler. The data and address lines are wired to the main buses in the CPU and therefore must be tri-state, that is, have a high impedance mode to allow another module to drive them. It may be that the data input and the data output can be both wired together. I'll consider this when I design the wiring between the various parts of the CPU. How should I approach the design of the register file? I have four options that I've considered. Firstly, one can consider a register file just to be a specialized form of SRAM. There is an address of three bits to specify a register and read and write operations can be performed on it. Second, edge triggered latches are often described as registers. Third, synchronous up-down counters have latches and the 74193 has the ability to set a new value. Lastly, programmable logic chips can do pretty much anything. Using SRAM is apparently a standard implementation in microprocessor design. However, the SRAM they use is on chip and has multiple ports for reading and writing concurrently. For my system, built with discrete chips, this won't work. Commonly available SRAM chips only have a single port for reading and writing. Furthermore, the timing of the write cycle is moderately complex, with time needed for the address to be stable before the write can be executed. Finally, the performance of SRAM chips tends to be quite low. I have two chips in my possession, one with 55 nanosecond read time and another with 150 nanoseconds. For this reason, I've discounted SRAM. A latch can be viewed as a register. 174574 is needed per register. I can perform a read by enabling output. I can perform a write by setting values on the data inputs and applying a positive clock edge. I'll need a total of eight chips for these registers. The only major downside is that incrementing and decrementing will have to be handled separately. A synchronous counter has latched outputs. A pair of 74193s is needed per register, as each is only 4 bits wide. Incrementing and decrementing is performed on a positive edge of the up and down pins. 
The main downside is that they don't have output enable pins, meaning a separate driver is required to select only one register for output at a time. Also, the data on the inputs must be held for a certain duration to write a value, and the pattern will be tricky to achieve. This means I would need 16 counters and 8 drivers, that is 24 chips just for the registers. I think that's too many. One ATF22V10 per register would provide the necessary 8 bits of a register. Like the simple latches, it has an output enable, making a read straightforward, and can perform a write on a positive clock edge. In theory, it's possible to make the logic handle increment and decrement too. Unfortunately, I can't find a way to make the logic fit. There are too many Boolean products. Gals are a bit more expensive too, and they do use a lot of power, relatively speaking. I'll discount this solution too. So, I've decided to use latches. Let's examine a single register. Output enable is active if the register file wants to send the register value to either the data or address bus. To write, the latch must receive a positive clock edge on the latch enable pin, with the data having been stable at the data input pins for some requisite time. To connect the latches together, two groups are required, one for even registers and one for odd registers. If the value is to be sent to the data bus, one of the two data out buffers will be enabled. If the value from a pair of registers is to be sent to the address bus, the two address out buffers will be enabled. This in total requires eight latches and four buffers, totaling 12 chips. The wiring is complicated by having two separate even and odd internal buses. Okay, I will pause the high level design at this point and focus on building this on some breadboards. I still have to design the increment and decrement support, the processor flags and the program counter. This is the overview of the registers themselves. I split the registers into two groups, one for even and one for odd, and so I'll just show the even registers for now. You can see the four registers, and then the two drivers as noted before. Only one register can be written at once, so the register write enable has been fully decoded into 8 bits, shown here. Since there are two separate internal buses for even and odd registers, the register for output only needs to be partially decoded into four flags, shown here. For example, ROE01, shown here, is a register output enable for either register 0 or register 1. The other three registers are the same. The even registers are connected to the data output bus via a driver, shown here. The driver is only enabled when the selected register number is even, that is, register select bit 0 is low, and when the data output enable is active. The odd registers are the same, except that register select bit 0 must be high. Likewise, the even registers are connected to the address bus via a driver, shown here. The even and odd registers drive different bits on the address bus so there is no need to select based on the low bit of the selected register. The decoding is done with a pair of 74138s. The first only decodes the two most significant bits of the register selection, as I said before, in order to select pairs of registers for output. Note that the 74138 provides inverted outputs, that is, active low. The second handles the right enable, which must be fully decoded, so all three bits are sent as an input. Because the 74138 provides an inverted output, the positive edge is midway through the clock cycle. I've chosen this deliberately to allow for some propagation delay on the inputs. Right, I have a schematic for an initial version of the register file. Next time, I'll build this on some breadboards and test it out. I have a Raspberry Pi Pico that I'm using to help with debugging. I found this a lot more reliable than playing with dip switches to set inputs. Thank you again for sticking around for the ride. Until next time.